In this video, what I want to do is show you three different ways that you can factor a quadratic trinomial when a is not equal to one. Because I think we all want the we all want the goal to be able to factor quickly and fast, right? With like minimal stress um, and be able to do it in our head. But I think we can all agree that not all problems or, you know, not all problems that we have usually come out that way. And it's always really nice when we get something that we can factor, but then sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. We're not really sure if we did it correctly. So what I want to do is kind of give you four different techniques that you can always use. Now, I always tell my students, especially the more advanced they are in the, um, in their courses that the more easier factoring should be to them, the more practice they should have under their belt. Um, however, I do recognize like when you're taking a test or you're taking an exam or anything like stress can come up. You're just probably been trying to, you know, remember or do a lot of things. And sometimes just like making a mistake or forgetting how to factor um, can come up. So while I don't encourage students to use a lot of these longer techniques, I do realize that sometimes that they can be very beneficial. Um, to being able to complete a problem, right? If you need to factor this and you could not do a problem like this in your head, then you might want to rely on some different, um, you want to might want to rely on some different techniques that are going to take a little bit longer. But I do still strongly advise that you learn how to not only use these techniques, but also be able to factor um, in your head and quickly. And again, guys, that's going to come with practice, right? So it's not like there's a flip of a switch that you're automatically just going to understand and to be able to do it. It does take practice. So let's kind of break down what are some ways that we could factor a trinomial like this? And the first method that I'm going to use, I don't know why I used an A. So the first method is I'm going to refer to is going to be what we'll call the box method. Okay. So the box method is going to be based on using the also kind of like the box method. We're going to call this like the AC method. Okay. So, um, so what we're going to do is if you remember, you have a quadratic like AX squared plus BX plus C. So what the AC method basically does is it multiplies our A times our C to create this kind of like um, cross. Now, sometimes we also recognize this as like the diamond method. I think when I first started teaching this, that is what we um, kind of called it because rather than using an X, we kind of created a diamond out of it and stuff like that, but whatever. All I simply want you to do is multiply your A times your C right up here, okay? So in this case, I have four times negative five. That's gonna give me a negative 16. And so that's going to be what we we'll call the multiplication. And then what we're going to do is actually, I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. Um, and then what you're going to do is take your B. Okay. And you're going to put it down below here and you can see my B in this case is a negative four. Okay. So what the AC method um, allows us to do in this case is the, um, what it allows us to do now is take the factors of 60 and to see which two numbers multiply to give me negative 60 and then are going to add to give me negative four. Now, from the beginning, this can kind of be overwhelming for a lot of students. So what I want you to do is kind of forget about the negatives for a second, and let's just find the factors of 60, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start listing them out. And you can see how, like, the bigger problem this could be, like, the bigger, uh, the longer and longer this could take. Now, obviously, you can do some of this in your head and so on and so forth, but I want to just kind of, like, go through this, work through this. If you, you know, really starting to get stuck, like, what are some different options and stuff you could do? Okay, so while I was talking, I also just kind of listed my factors, right? All these numbers multiply to give me 60. Now, again, these are just going to give me 60, not dealing with the negative 60. Don't worry about negative 60 for a second. If I was going to get negative 60, obviously one of these numbers would have to be negative, right? Either, you know, the 60 or the one. Not both, because if negative times a negative is going to give you positive, right? So one of them has to be negative. All right. So since my middle term or since, um, since my middle term is going to be a, actually, let me put it back to this. Since my factored form or the C is going to be a, or my A times C, where do you want to think about it? Or the C in this case is a negative. What I'm looking for is the factors of my A times C that's going to give me, or I'm sorry, the factors of my A times C that has a difference of four. So you can see here's a difference of 59, right? Here's a difference of 28. Here's a difference of, let's see, 11. Here's a difference of seven. Here's a difference of four. Ah, so here is what we're going to look at, okay? Now, what we're looking for is we want to say, all right, well, what two numbers when I add them up together, right? I know 10 times six gives me 60. I want them to give me negative 60. That means I need one of these to be negative. Now, if one of them is going to be negative, when I combine them or add them up, right, I need to get negative four. So therefore, what I want is my 10 to be a negative and my six to be a positive, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a 10 here and a six here. Okay. These are going to be in my factors um, that are going to create this. Now that's part of the AC method, but that is not the whole ideal. Now what we need to do is go into the box method. And actually what I'm going to do, 
I'm going to kind of rewrite this. I'm going to say this is the AC method with the box method. Okay, because that's what we're kind of doing like is two things here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a box. And the reason why we're going to create a box is because when you are multiplying um, two terms, what you're really doing is finding the area of that, um, of like uh, the area of like a, a box, right? So when you multiply two things, think of like length times width, right? That's finding the area of inside of a square. So, or of a rectangle. So what I'm going to do is we have a... What we want to do is we want to create two binomials, right? So we want to create our two binomials that we're going to multiply, right? That it's going to give me this expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in the kind of the area. Like if we can kind of think of this as the area, let's call this the area of this expression. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to find like the parts that multiply to give me that, right? Because that's what factoring is. We're trying to take this expression and rewrite it as a product. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is take this first part, the four X squared, I'm gonna write it right up here. So I'm gonna say four X squared. And then I'm gonna take the negative 15, I'm gonna put it down here. Now the whole reason why we did this AC method, the whole reason why we did this is because these are the values that go in these other two boxes, okay? So it doesn't really matter which one you put them in there, I'm just gonna put a negative 10. Now again, these technically are gonna be my linear terms. So this is gonna be a 10 X, I'm sorry, negative 10 X. And this is going to be now a six X. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the side lengths of each of these boxes. So what you want to do is start in this top box and say, all right, what two numbers here multiply to give me a 4x squared? Well, you could say a 4 and a, you could say a 4x and a 1x or a 2x and a 2x. Now, the problem here though, is I don't want to put a 4x times an x. And the reason why this is not going to work is because yeah, 4x times x gives you a 4x squared. But 4x times what gives you negative 10? That's not going to be an integer, right? That's going to be that's going to be a fraction. And guess what? It works the same way if you put it over here. Like 4x times what gives you 6x? Again, that's going to be a fraction. So 4x and x are not going to work. What I'm going to want to deal with is a 2x times a 2x, right? Because 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times what gives you a negative 10x? That's a negative 5. 2x times what gives you a 3 or gives you a 6x? That's going to be a positive 3. And again, check the last box. Negative five, the height, times three, the width, gives you a negative 15. And guess what, guys? This is now going to be our answer. So that's going to be a 2x plus three times a 2x minus five. That is now going to be your factor form. So that is with the AC method and the box method. Now, I'm not gonna need to do as much talking to kind of go through the next method, but let's kind of look at the, again, doing this now instead of the box method, because some students like the box method, you know, but some students I think just get really confused with the box method. So let's go and do another way that might be not take as much space. And obviously, since we now know the answer, uh, we don't need to do as much explanation. So this is gonna be still with the AC method, but now we're going to do with grouping. Okay, so again, if you have a little bit better understanding of factoring, um, then this one might be a really good idea. Okay, so we're still gonna do the same thing, right? You're gonna say, all right, we're gonna do the AC method, right? So you do AC, that's gonna be what, to, oh, and this is what I was talking about. Like when you're trying to multiply, you're trying to find the numbers that multiply to give you 60, but add, right, to give you negative four. That's how we got that negative 10 to six, okay. So again, we still do this, negative 60, right? It gives you negative four. What two numbers multiply to give you negative four, add to give you negative 60. We say that's going to be a negative 10 and that's going to be a positive six, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is rather than putting these terms into a box, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, all right, these are, these are the two terms that actually add to give me a negative four X, right? So these are actually my linear terms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my original equation. So four X squared minus a four X, and minus a 15, right? That's my original equation. What I want you to understand is I can actually rewrite this as a 4x squared, and I'm going to change the colors here, uh, minus, did I change it? Yeah, minus a 10x. Oh, why does it always do that? I want to do that in there. Okay. Minus a 10x plus a 6x, because don't you see how those two add to give you negative 4x, right? And then therefore, that's going to be minus a 15, okay? So all I'm simply doing is by using this AC method, I'm just using the AC method to rewrite my middle term as a negative 4x, as a negative 10x plus 6x. Now what I can do in this case, though, is factor by grouping. 
So what you can do now is group your first two terms, okay, and then group your second two terms. And now what I want to do is say, all right, what common term can I factor out of each of these expressions? In this case, you could say, well, you can factor out a 2x. And when I factor out a 2x, what am I going to be left with? I'm going to be left with a 2x minus a 5. And then over here, as I go ahead and factor out, I say, all right, what can I factor out of here? And you can say, well, you can factor out a positive 3. Right? And when I factor out a positive 3, what am I going to be left with? Well, I'm going to be left with a 2x minus, oops, I don't want to do that. I want to do the black again, or the dark blue. Didn't hit it. I'll be left with a 2x minus a 5. Okay, now what I want you to guys see is I have two expressions, right? So let's kind of do it like this. I have two expressions that are separated by multiplication, right? You can see they are separated by multiplication. Now, inside of both those expressions, though, I have common terms here. This 2x minus 5 to 2x minus 5. So what I can do between these two expressions is just like if it was written like this. Again, I'm just going over this because a lot of students get confused here. If I had like 2xy plus a 3y, wouldn't you guys agree I could factor out the y? right, to a 2x plus 3. Well, this is the exact same thing that's happening here. Instead of y, I have a 2x minus 5, right? 2x minus 5 is combined, is, is common between these two terms. So therefore, I can factor it out. So by factoring a 2x minus 5, I'm now going to be left with what's left over, the 2x plus 3. And by multiplying out this 2x plus 3, you can see that, holy crap, that was the exact same answer I had over here. Okay, so that's another technique. And now let's go and go into the last one, which is my favorite, which I think all students should aspire to. But again, like I mentioned, guys, if you get stuck or whatever else, like you can always, you know, refer back to these. Don't get super stuck with um, trying to factor in your head. But I do want to go through my process, my thought process when I'm looking at a problem like this to see, hey, can I factor this? Or is it factorable um, across integers? So what you're going to want to do is what I always like to do on a problem like this is I like to say, all right, this can be broken down into a product of two factors, right? So 4x times x, right? Or we could do a 2x. Um, let's actually, let me move this over. Okay, and then we'll go from here. So I'll do a 2x times an x. Okay, all right. Now, again, we already know the answer, so we don't want to cheat. So let's pretend we don't know the answer. Um, now, what I want to do is think about my factors for 15. Now, again, this is a negative 15, right? So the reason why I bring that up is because that's a negative 15. What we're doing is we're looking for, um, we're going to want to be finding the difference of our two products. And the difference of the two products I'm talking about is these two products, the inner and the outer. So that the difference of the two products needs to add to give us a negative four. So here's where things are going to get mixed eight. I don't want to multiply a four times a 15. Like I don't want to do a 15 times negative one. Like that's not going to work. Actually, let me do this as like a red. That's not going to work. And the reason why it's going to work is four times 15 is 60. X times one is a negative one, right? So 60 and one, that's a difference of 59. I need to get the difference of four. All right. So that's not going to work now. And again, I'm not even worried about the negative here in a second, but let's even look at like a difference of, well, let's do one and 15. Okay, so let's do a positive 1, negative 15. Again, 4x times x, 4x times 1 is 1. 15 times x is negative 15. That's a difference of negative 11. That's not going to work, okay? So then let's go ahead and do the 4x is, you know, the 15 and 1s, this is not working out, right? So now let's go ahead and try another one. Well, how about we do 4x and x? And again, you could do the same thing in here. I'm just going to kind of leave this so you guys can see my, the work and my thought process. What about 15 and 3? So if I did like, let's say a five and a negative three, and again, I'm just like guessing and checking kind of in my head. Well, four times five is 20, right? And three times X is three, 20 and three is going to have a difference of 17, not even close. Right. And what about if I just switch these over? What if I just made this a three and this a five? Now in this case, let's say that's a minus five. This would be four times three is 12, right? And negative five times X is going to be our negative five times one would be seven or be five. So the difference of five and 12 and five would be a seven pretty close. But again, we're not getting anywhere. It doesn't matter how I move this around. It's not going to work. So this is not going to work, right? So this does not work as well. Dang. So now what I'm doing is I'm thinking in my head, all right, two X again. Now, do I want to use a 15 again? Do I want to go to a 15 and you know, a one and no, that's not going to work, right? Two times 15 is 30. All right. And then negative 30 and then one times X is a one. That's a negative 29. Like that's not going to work. So you say, all right, well, what about a two X and an X, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a two X and a two X, right? 
make sure you get that in there. So that should be a 2x and a 2x. And you say, all right, well, then let's think about this. What do I want to multiply? What do I want to be negative, right? So if I did 2x times a 5, that would be a negative 10. And then if I did 2x times 3, that'd give me a 6, right? Well, if I want to get to negative 4, I want to do 2x times a negative 5, right? Because I want that to be a negative 10. I'm saying that. So 2x minus 5. And then if I want this 2x to be plus 3. And again, guys, even like you do this guess and check, right? Always go back and check your work. Like you can do this in your head or you can think about it here. 2x times 2x is going to be a 4x squared, right? 3 times negative 5 is going to be a negative 15, right? What we're doing or what I was doing in my head is I was doing these two. 3 times 2x is going to be a positive 6x. 2x times negative 5 is a negative 10x, right? These combine to give me a negative 4x. So the more practice that you guys get, the faster and easier it's going to become. But again, guys, don't worry if this is a struggle for you or if it feels like it's even taking too long for you to do it in your head. You can always fall back on and rely on these older methods, the box method or the grouping method using the AC method to help you with your factoring. I hope the video was helpful for you. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Cheers.